The Flying Reporter YouTube channel is made possible by the generosity of Supporters Club members and Anglian Warbirds. Book your flight in the 1940s Harvard or Boeing Stearman now. Hello, today I'm flying to an aerodrome with a difference. Join me as I visit a former World War II American airbase in Norfolk. Clear prop. The aerodrome I'm visiting today is Seething, about 10 miles southeast of Norwich. I like my videos to tell a story, and yesterday I put a post up on my social media site asking people to let me know if there was anywhere they would suggest that had an interesting story to tell. And uh, one post from Graham Wright jumped out of the page at me. Graham wrote, you'll be welcome at Seething with our unusual hangar layouts. Paul Taylor replied, is that the hangars with the revolving floors? Revolving floors? This I've got to see. Got Oscar Romeo out for one ready for departure. Oscar Romeo, hold out for one after departure, right turn outbound Godstone, not above altitude 1,400 feet. Gulf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, hold position after departure, right turn by Godstone, not above altitude 1,400 feet. Gulf Oscar Romeo. Oscar Romeo, correct, line up and wait for runway 26 left. Line up and wait, 26 left, Gulf Oscar Romeo. Oscar Romeo, previous departure, remain in the circuit, one way 26 left, clear for takeoff, surface wind, 220 degrees, 1 2 knots. Clear for takeoff, runway 26 left, looking for traffic, Golf Oscar Romeo. Temperatures and pressures are in the green. Airspeed alive, S50 knots, uh, ease it off. Revolving hangar floors are not the only interesting thing about seething. Unlike so many other aerodromes in the UK that are obviously set up to make a profit, to pay wages and probably shareholders as well, seething is owned by its members. It's run by volunteers on a purely non-commercial basis. Is this a model other aerodromes might want to consider? We're going to find out. Golf Oscar Romeo, North Abeam, Bow Beach, Reservoir, request frequency change, big and approach, 129.405. Golf Oscar Romeo, Scott Cross Security, free call begin. Scott 7000, Golf Oscar Romeo. Big and approach, good morning, Golf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, request basic service. Golf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, big and approach, good morning, pass the message. Golf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, PA28, Red Hill to Seething VFR, that's Echo Golf Sierra Juliet. Only seven oaks, altitude 2,200 feet, 1009. Request basic service. Call us to Romeo Basic Service. You have begin QNH is 1009er. Squawk 7047. Basic service, QNH 1009er, Squawk 7047. Golf Oscar Romeo. Confirm, and at the moment I've got no known traffic to affect. Golf Oscar Romeo. So, quite a few uh, fluffy clouds today that tower quite high. Um, which gives you clues to the stability of the air. In other words, the air is rising quite rapidly. Got quite a lot of energy in it, and uh, thus it's a bit bumpy. Um, all predictable, of course, from looking at the charts and measurements. Quite a low pressure system at the moment. We're sort of in between systems. There's lots of occluded fronts to the northwest of here. Uh, we're just to the south of the low, and. Uh, been quite a lot of thunderstorms and rain uh, over the last uh, day or so. Just south of the Thames. And I'm talking to Biggin Hill because this is quite a busy spot for their airspace. You've got the instrument to traffic manoeuvring uh, in this area. Lots of uh, joins and arrivals from and to the east. Golf Oscar Romeo is just south of the Thames now, and uh, request frequency change south end, listening squawk 130, decimal 780. Golf Oscar Romeo, that's approved and good day to you. See you later, Golf Oscar Romeo. Five to six miles, good twice to them, one, two, three, just four, five, three, thanks for your help. Golf Stroger, roger, and squawk on security, bye-bye. 
People ask me why I choose a listening squawk, just double checking the listening squawks, I did that from memory, yeah. Um, why I choose a listening squawk over a service. If we've got fairly good visibility, uh, I am fairly comfortable using a listening squawk around here. It is a busy area, but these are busy units, South End, and uh, we're, we are encouraged to use listening squawks. And I'll keep a good lookout. Uh, we're here, so we'll go round to 053. Now, normally when you're flying, you try and go straight, but uh, to get between South End and London's airspace, to avoid these other aerodromes, we have to weave a little bit. You might think it adds a huge amount of time to your journey, but it doesn't. It adds a minute, if that, sometimes. Uh, you know, doing a bit of weaving sometimes to make for an easier ride, less workload in the cockpit. It's not really much at all. So we were there at 4.4, so we're expecting there next to be 5.7. Keeping the plug going. We'll do a Frida check. We've got no warning lights. We've got gauges are all in the green. We took off at 2-1 and we're coming up for a change on the fuel tank so we can uh, put a fuel pump on, switch tanks to the right, ready to change back if there's any problems, the pressure's holding. Now taking fuel from the right hand wing as opposed to the left hand wing and we'll turn the fuel pump off, check that the pressure holds from the engine pump. So there are two fuel pumps, a bit of redundancy in this 1980s aircraft. So if the engine one doesn't work, we've got a secondary one here. Golf, 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 there's traffic south of you by one mile, tracking towards you, in fact manoeuvring in that position now. Level and type unknown, just a primary contact. Traffic ahead, uh, left to right. Nope. It's uh, actually coming towards me. Now, I turned left to avoid, which is technically not what you do if you're head on, but I was slightly left of the aircraft and I didn't want to turn into its path because we weren't that far away. So as we close in on seething uh, and before we do our pre-landing uh, sequences, just wanted to let you know that I've now left the BBC where I've worked for more than 30 years, uh, the last 20 odd years as a reporter or a producer director. And I've now set up my own video production business and uh, I'll be making the flying reporter videos as I've been doing, um, hopefully at an increasing frequency now I've got more time. Uh, but also uh, I'm opening myself up to people who want videos made for them, be it for a company, a charity, the public sector, or maybe just for personal purposes. So if you want a uh, video made, uh, as I say, for your website for example, then get in touch with uh, me through my uh, website and uh, we can talk about your project. The new business is not the only bit of news I need to share with you today. I'm delighted to announce that I'm collaborating with six other UK YouTubers to stage our own fly-in. It's a chance for us to meet you, our supporters and fans. It's on Sunday the 15th of August from 10am at Wolverhampton Hapney Green Aerodrome. We're extremely grateful to Pooley's Flight Equipment for generously supporting the event. I'll be there along with plain old Ben, Rory on Air, the Micropilot, Ben Atkinson, Joe Del Flyer and let's go flying. If you can't make the event in person, we'll be broadcasting live from there at 1pm on the day. There are discounted landing fees if you can book in advance. Slots are filling up fast, so visit my website to make sure you're not disappointed. I look forward to seeing you in August. We're getting close to seething now, so I refresh my memory of the Pooley's landing chart. So, having a look at seething. Got uh, two four left hand circuit. Uh, elevation is 130. Got to watch the uh, distance between aircraft on the taxiway because it's quite tight. 
799, which is more than plenty for us to land and take off again. And uh, we're expecting the wind to be at 200, so it'll be a slight left crosswind. Uh, probably about four knots, so hopefully that's doable. Let's uh, pop in seething radio. 118435. Seething Radio, good morning, Golf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, uh, inbound, we are seven miles to the southwest, request aerodrome information. Golf Bravo Hotel, Oscar Romeo, you're, uh, we're using 24 left hand, the QFE 1003. 24 left hand, QFE 1003, and we'll join overhead runway 24, Golf Oscar Romeo. Oscar Romeo, roger. Golf Oscar Romeo, final 24 to land. Oscar Romeo, no reports of traffic, wind 200110. Golf Oscar Romeo. Nose into wind. The slip on. The slip or cross controls is a technique you can use to lose height without increasing airspeed. On arrival, Graham Wright, who'd messaged me on Facebook, was there to greet me. Graham. Hello. Welcome to Seething. Thank you so much. What a lovely place you've got here. Well, we try to make it look good. How long have you been based here then? 30 years. 1988, in fact, I started flying from here on my PPL. And when you're a member here, you're not just a member and just use the facilities, you chip in. Oh, yes. We do all the uh, maintenance and everything. It's all the members. You own the airfield? Basically, yes. And how rare is that in UK terms? I think it's very rare, very rare. Very few places operate like that. Yeah, that's right. So how does it work exactly when you sign up to join the airfield? Well, first of all, you've got to be a member here for, before you can get near an aircraft, you've got to be a member here for at least four months and prove that you do come out and help and uh, not just turn up and fly, go home. Because yeah. <laughs> I wondered if that would be a problem. Um, how do you make sure that everyone pulls their way? Oh, it's just, yeah, everyone does. It's just a friendly airfield and everyone comes and does their bit. If you've got, pl we've got plumbers, electricians, all come and do the work. And there's a lot of grass to look after. That's Alan's job. Well, I'm tending the lawns at the moment and filling in where rabbits have been scrapping and making holes, so I, I've got some spare grass, so I'm inserting that in the, in the holes that they've scrapped out. It's a never-ending job, actually. In the 1970s, Alan used to be the local policeman, and then, in 1982, he got his flying licence. These days, he's at the aerodrome nearly every day. Unfortunately, I lost my wife ten years ago, and this was a saviour. I, I was completely lost for five years. And I just came up here and started tidying. Well, I've been tidying up and cutting grass for many years. But uh, we're OK now. We're OK now. The people at Seething and the Aerodrome have helped Alan through some difficult times. That's the power of the aviation community right there. Now, I want to see those rotating hangar floors in action. Graham gave me a demonstration. Well, this is one of our hangars of the turntables in. It's the modern one because it's all computer controlled. You just press a button and your aircraft comes around to the front. Good okay. Okay. The, the uh, turntable is controlled by a panel here. You have your buttons with the aircraft numbers on. You press the button and your aircraft comes around to the front and meets you. Okay, let's play aircraft bingo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll pick, we'll pick this one here. Press that, the lights start and around it comes. It's ingenious. They saw a similar setup in another country and brought the idea here. The aircraft sit in their respective runners, so there's no danger of any damage. Three of the hangars have the system. OK, it's probably not making the most efficient use of the hangar space, but at least there's no danger of any hangar rash, and getting your aeroplane out for a flight isn't like a massive game of Jenga.
This is a Peton Pole Air Camper, built in 2005 but based on a 1920s design. This example is owned by Greg Shepherd, a member at Seething for more than 30 years. Well, it was designed by an American, Bernard Peaton Pole, who flew the prototype in 1929. They call him the father of the home-built movement because he was one of the first designers to design and build his own aeroplane. The design didn't really catch on in this country till the 1980s when the uh, plans were redrawn by an Englishman uh, in line with modern um, CAA requirements. If you like uh, open cockpit flying, uh, as I do, it's, uh, it's tremendous. It can be a little daunting in January, but <laughs> June, it's very pleasant. And in keeping with the home-built style, the receptacle for the tail wheel on Greg's trolley is a saucepan. Seething was home to the 448th Bomb Group, a part of the 2nd Air Division of the 8th American Air Force, and constructed as a base for Liberator bombers. They left after the end of the war in July 1945, and the aerodrome ceased to be. But in the 1960s, a small group of enthusiasts got together to bring it back into use. One of those early members was Mike Page. Mike November, Roger, 220 degrees, 8 knots, no report of traffic. So how long have you been here? I started in 1960 when the airfield started um, and I've been here, so I've been a member since. And it was a fairly well-known person that started it up, is that Jimmy right? Jimmy Ho-Season, yeah. Ho-Seasons as in the holiday. That's company. it, correct, yeah, yeah. And he was a flyer, was he? Yes, he was, yeah. He was, uh, he was a flyer at that time. Uh, he had a messenger and uh, that was the first aircraft he brought here. Jimmy had the idea to make it flying affordable to the man in the street and that was his idea and to do that you had to get the people involved in running the airfield maintaining it, and all that sort of thing so there's quite a, quite a lot involved and most of the members say 90 percent of the members as Graham will know they all help well you know it's the same nowadays we get sort of 80 percent of the members will help and the other 20 don't do anything which is a pity really but that's how it is. How do you organize all the jobs that have to be done? Well I produce a list <laughs> A big long list, which I've got at the moment, which has about sort of 30 items on, and they're all listed, and we post them on the board, and then we get members to volunteer. Delta Kilo, nice to see you. Have a good trip. How, how often do you come here and work slash volunteer? I'm here about three days a week, roughly. Yeah. yeah. Saturday, Sunday and Wednesday, and then other days when I fly as well. So a big part of your life, this airfield. Oh yeah, I love it, yeah. Seething has a really friendly feel to it, and it's well worth a visit. It's been wonderful visiting Seething today, and my thanks to Graham Wright for inviting me to have a look around. And if you know of somewhere interesting that's worth exploring and might make a good feature for the Flying Reporter channel, then do get in touch. I look forward to discovering some more hidden gems like Seething here. My thanks to my supporters club members and thanks to you for watching. Fly safely, my friends.